Famicie, 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 what a man I see. Zacknation.net Famicie, Famicie, Nami, Famicie, what a man I see. I come to the song, it says, Yeah, oh, my bank I see. Fawonsa kata msu Jimmy free boning in emu na pharmacy what about us won't you na metin ada mira yesu so minsa fama na mosi sie na pharmacy what about us pharmacy Precious one, the Lord bless you and cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord has been gracious unto you and the Lord has been merciful unto you and has given you opportunity to be counted among the living. The Lord has imparted to you health and strength and we want you to know that God is for you and God is not against you. I want to seize this opportunity to let you know that in all these things, the word of God says that we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the storms that come against you. There is a God that speaks to the storm. There is a God that quiets the storm. There is a God that brings triumph and victory out of the storm. That is the God that is for you and that is the God with whom we have to do. He is the God that we are dealing with. So I want to encourage you to stay strong in the Lord and God will show you his favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 it says that no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other ye cannot serve God and mammon so in this life you are either serving God or you are not serving God you are either for God or you are against God you are either standing for God or you are standing against God depending on what you say depending on what you think depending on what you support depending on what you back depending on what you do you are either for God or you are against God hallelujah so if you are for God God is aware if you are against God God is aware so in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 it says that no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one or love the other so in this life you either hate God and love something else or you love God and hate other things and then he also says that he will either hold on to the one and despise another and so if you are not holding on to God what it means is that you are despising God if you are not holding on to God it means you are despising God you are you are disregarding God and so the hour has come for us to hold on to God by our attitude the hour has come for us to hold on to God by our actions. The hour has come for us to hold on to God by our utterances and by our thoughts. So this is an honest and a sincere question you have to ask yourself. Are you for God or you are against God? Based on what you think, based on what you say, based on what you back, based on what you support, God will know whether you are for him or you are against him there is a story in the book of luke chapter 12 verse 15 jesus was talking unto the people he said he narrated a parable unto them in luke chapter 12 verse 15 listen to what jesus said and he said unto them take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses and he said unto them take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. 
so you have to understand that your life is more than what you are possessing your life is more than what you have your life is more than what you have acquired don't reduce your life to the possessions you have don't reduce the value of your life to the to the properties you have acquired your life is more than the properties you have acquired your life is superior and greater to the wealth you have acquired anytime you equate your worth and your value to your possessions to your riches and to your properties what you are doing is that you have become covetous you have become greedy so jesus said unto them take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesseth when you are covetous and you are greedy the only thing you value is properties the only thing you value is wealth the only thing you value is riches you even value it more than your life you have to understand that your life is higher than any other thing that you will acquire on earth your life is greater than any other thing that you will amass on earth hallelujah a man's life consisted not in the abundance of things which he possesses your life is not equated with abundance that you have what 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 adds value to your life is your ability to dispossess yourself to deny yourself for god and for the things of god and for the cause of god praise the lord when you read verse 16 of luke chapter 12 verse 16 of luke chapter 12 listen to what the bible said and he spake a parable unto them saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully so everybody is looking for plenty everybody is looking for plenty so the ground of this rich man brought forth plentifully verse 17 and he thought within himself saying what shall i do because i have no room i have no space where to bestow my fruits he thought within himself so your thoughts are important your thoughts are visible to god you what you think god is aware of them and it is your thoughts that determines your actions if your thoughts are godly your actions will be godly if your thoughts are for god you take actions for god if your thoughts are against god you take actions that are against god you take actions that are opposed to god and so he thought within himself he didn't say to anybody he thought within himself and communicated within himself saying what shall i do because i have no space where to bestow my fruits so god can bring you to a stage in your life where you have plenty God can bring you to a state in your life where you have more than enough, where you have abundance, where there is no room to contain the properties and the wealth and the riches you have acquired. When God brings you to the level where you have abundance, what do you do? Do you do it? Do you use it just for yourself, to please yourself, to promote the cause of the devil, to promote the cause of the world? or to promote the cause of the God who gave you the riches and who gave you life and health to acquire those riches. So when you read verse 18 of Luke chapter 12, Jesus said, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bands and build greater ones and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. So you realize that in all his thinkings and in all decisions, God was no part it was all about himself it was all about how to gather how to amass and how to acquire things for himself it was all about how to hoard things it was not about the god who gave him life it was not about the god who gave him strength and health to get and acquire the things he did it was not about the god that gave him the wisdom and the ideas to prosper and to succeed and so in verse 19 he says that i will say to my soul so thou hast much goods laid up for many years take your ease eat drink and be merry take your ease eat drink and be merry life is more than eating and drinking life is more than being merry life is more than being at ease life is about being a blessing unto others life is about fulfilling the purpose of god the agenda of god 
for your life why has god created you why did god give you the position he gave you why did god give you the wealth and the riches he gave you he gave it to you to promote and to facilitate his cause and his agenda and so he says take your ease that's what the man said he said take your ease take your ease but in amos chapter 6 verse 1 he says that woe unto them that are at ease woe unto them that are at ease in zion and they trust in the mountain of samaria which are named the chief of the nations to whom the house of israel has come and so when you 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 you, you get to the point where you are at ease you are relaxed nothing concerns you again you are not interested in the plan of god you are not interested in the agenda of god you are only interested in satisfying your desires and your fleshy expectation but the bible says that woe unto them that are at ease in life you must not be at ease you must be on the move you must be on the move jesus said my father works always and i also work so jesus was always on the move in life you must always be on the move to accomplish something for god because it is what you accomplish for god here that will determine what will be you you will have up there in heaven it is what you do for god here that will determine what you have up there in heaven if you do nothing for God here, you have no, uh, you have nothing there for yourself. You have no treasure up there for yourself. So you have to commit yourself to doing something for God. The issue and the question is that what have you done for God? What have you done for God? If you have not done anything for God on earth that you can point here, if you have not done anything for the name of God, if you have not done anything for the cause of God, it means you have nothing there. So start doing something for God that will give you treasure up there. And so you must not come to the point where you have relaxed. You, 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 you have lost seriousness for the things of God. You, you, you are unconcerned about the things of God. You have become passive to the things of God. You disregard the things of God. When it comes to the things of God, you are insensitive to it. You are only sensitive to the things that bring money to your pocket. You are only sensitive to the things that bring wealth and riches to you. You are only sensitive to the things that promote your ego and that promote your fame and that promote your popularity. You have to start thinking and rethinking, what can I do to promote the cause of God? It's very, very important. Hallelujah. And so in verse 20 of Luke chapter 12, in verse 20 of Luke chapter 12, listen to what God said. But God said unto him, you fool this night your soul your soul shall be required of thee then whose shall those things be which you have provided whose shall those things be who, which you have provided so anybody who who does not lay treasures for god who does not promote the cause of god and all he does is to is to acquire things for himself god calls such a person a fool god calls such a person a fool when you get to the point where you are not interested in doing anything for the cause of God, God can take your life from you. What happens is that you will lose protection. God will not protect you any longer and you can die anytime you can lose your life. God is looking for people who promote his agenda, who promote his cause, who are concerned about the things that God is concerned about. Then God shall preserve them. God shall secure them and God shall flourish them to do more for him. So God said, you fool, this night your soul shall be taken from you and we shall see who will enjoy the things that you have, you have hoarded. What are you hoarding? And the things you are hoarding, are you hoarding them to promote the cause of God or to promote it only yourself? Any move you make, any decision you take, you must put God in the picture. When you put God in the picture, then you have become valuable to God and God will also keep you, God will also back you and you also have treasure up there. But in verse 21 of Luke chapter 12, listen to what Jesus said. He said, So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So is he that lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So if you are only laying treasure for yourself, you are only acquiring things for yourself, for yourself, for your family, for your children, only for yourself and nothing for God, it means that you are not rich toward God. 
all the treasures you are acquiring, the certificate, the qualification is all for yourself. None of them is directed for the cause of God to promote the agenda of God. If you are like that, it means you are not rich toward God. You have to be rich toward God. You have to invest in God. You have to invest your time in God. You have to invest your resources in God. You have to invest your energy in God. You have to invest your expertise in God. Check your life and ask yourself, how much am I investing in God? How much am I investing in God? If you are not investing much in God, if you are not investing much in the cause of God, in the agenda of God, then you are not rich toward God. Then in the eyes of God, you are poor. In the eyes of God, you are nothing. In the eyes of God, you are useless. The hour has come for you to start rethinking, rethinking, and rethinking, and be asking yourself, what can I do more for God and for his cause so that I will be rich towards God? We are rich toward everything, but we are not rich toward God. When that happens, you have no treasure up there. So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, Jesus said, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up yourself, you lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Invest in God's things. Invest in God's things. Invest in the things that matter to God. Invest in the things that represent God. God has no peers. God has no classmates. God must be treated first. Must be given the first place in every move, in every decision that you take. So in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 6, it says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And so the Bible says that to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And so you're, you're, you, you have to be spiritually minded. You have to be spiritually influenced. So into the spiritual things of God. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. Galatians chapter 6 verse 8. It says that for he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. If you look at the earlier scripture we read in Romans chapter 8 verse, verse 6, it says that to be carnally minded is death. If all your mentality has to do with the physical, physical and the flesh, it will lead you to death. But I said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you want to have life and peace, you have to be, be, be focused on God. You have to invest in God. You have to invest in the spiritual things of God. That is what brings you life and that is what brings you peace. And when you read Gal Galatians 6 verse 8, it says, when you sow to your flesh, what you are doing is that you reap corruption. You reap corruption. But when you sow to the spirit, you reap life everlasting. And so God is calling us to be spiritually minded because God is a spirit. We have to start investing in the spiritual things of God. We have to start investing in the spiritual things of God. That is what will give us treasure in heaven. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, it says that, And I, brethren, I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but I spoke unto you as unto carnal, even as unto babies in Christ. So when you are not spiritual, what you are in the sight of God is that you are a baby. You are a baby. You are not mature. Spiritual people are mature. The more mature you, you become in God, the more spiritual you become. But when you are not spiritual and you are carnal, all your thinking is for the flesh and for the self. And you don't think to promote the agenda and the cause of God. You are carnal and you are a baby. So ask yourself, assess yourself, am I a baby or am I mature in Christ? Am I spiritual or I am carnal? Hallelujah. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44, it says that it is raised a spiritual. It is raised a spiritual. When you become spiritual, it raises you. Spirituality raises you. It changes your level. Carnality reduces you. Carnality brings you down. So become spiritual. Be committed to the things of God. When you are committed to the things of God, the agenda of God, that is spirituality. 
and in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 it is written blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ so even our blessings are spiritual our blessings are spiritual you have to become spiritual in order to contact the blessings the reason why many people cannot manifest the blessings of god is that is that they are not spiritual because the blessings are spiritual so you have to be spiritual you have to value spiritual things you have to value the things that be of god to contact the blessings of god that will make you a blessing to humanity finally in first peter chapter 2 verse 5 it is written that you are also lively stone you you, ye also as lively stone are built up a spiritual house are built up a spiritual house and so when you become spiritual it builds you up spirituality builds you up you are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices so when you become spiritual you offer spiritual things spiritual people offer spiritual things spiritual people are concerned about spiritual things people that are of god people that are, are godly because god is a spirit people that are godly are spiritual and they offer up spiritual things it says that you offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god it is the spiritual sacrifices you offer that are acceptable unto god you have to start offering spiritual things when you when you offer things to god you offer your time you offer your your resources you offer your expertise you offer your energy what you are doing is that you are offering spiritual sacrifices these are the things that are acceptable to god if you want to be acceptable to god become spiritual and become rich towards god and invest in god and stop concentrating too much on yourself you have invested a lot in the physical the hour has come for you to lay treasures up there so that one day when you go there there will be a mansion for you there will be treasure for you there will be a reward for you start investing in god and the things that matter to god start thinking about god and the things that matter to god and you shall have treasure up there precious one i know this message has come to bless you wherever you are watching me from I want to pray with you because if you are not connected to God, your destiny is not safe. Your eternal destiny is not safe. So pray this prayer with me wherever you are watching me from. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. I have received and believed your word. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Come into my heart. and Be my Lord and my Savior. Change my life. Make me a testimony to those who know me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For answering my prayers amen now i want to pray for you precious one if you are sick in any part of your body god is going to heal you right now god is going to touch you right now lay your hand where the sickness is and stretch forth the other hand toward the screen or lay the other hand on the screen as i pray for you right now god is going to heal you right now in the mighty name of jesus christ i take authority over every spirit of sickness and disease every spirit of affliction every spirit of oppression harassing your life and your health i hold all of them bound in jesus name i command them to be cast out of your life cast out of your body in jesus name i speak healing into your body from the top of your head to the sole of your feet be healed now be made totally whole in jesus name amen and amen precious one your life is never the same until i see you again tomorrow remember jesus is still on the throne god bless you